how are you feeling about the ladder position at the moment? Oh, it's, it is what it is. It's a reflection of our season. Um, yeah, it just presents a great opportunity for us. Does it add any extra pressure or anything like that for you, John? <clears throat> well, it, in, a, in a way it does, but it shouldn't. Um, you know, we've been saying all along that we want to improve our footy as the season goes on, and that opportunity still presents. Um, <clears throat> I suppose, yeah, it does present a, a level of outcome-based focus, um, focus that... Um, we need to control. It's a it's a different situation for our playing group, and it's another challenge. Fans will be thinking, you know, finals or a possibility. Do you start thinking about? Not really. No, no. I think about Geelong on a, on a five day break um, at home. It's it's really really simple for our players to um, make sure they just stay um, process orientated, um, their heads in the moment on the on the job at hand. Um, it just presents, a, the, the ladder position presents another level of distraction that we need to handle. What is prime time for you? Are you really excited to be playing in that time slot? Oh, absolutely. Um, probably more excited about, you know, we get to go up against a, a really good side. Um, we, need to, we need to improve against the better sides and it's another opportunity to see how much we've progressed throughout the season. Just on that five-day break, how's the team? Any injury niggles or anyone in doubt? Well, there's always a level of soreness within the playing group. Um, it's really important that we get their mindset um, and their mental state on the, the game coming up rather than review. And um, we've tried to turn that around pretty quick, focus on Geelong mentally. Um, we'll do a light training session today and it's really about getting your bodies as close to 100% as you can. Like, there's gonna be guys that are sore. Um, there's gonna be a le level of fatigue creep into the game. Um, we've experienced that last year. We played off four day breaks last year, so um, that experience should hold us in good stead. No trouble against top eight teams, Sydney you beat, but I guess that's the challenge for, for Thursday night for you. It is, yeah. And um, we've, we've had good moments against top eight sides and the better sides. Um, we just haven't been able to, to sustain it. So that's a challenge ahead of us. Um, and it's the next, next progression for our side is to be able to compete against the best for longer. So uh, it's another opportunity for that. Do you feel a self-belief, particularly after Saturday, building amongst the group, just what they did and how convincing it was? Yeah, I think it was probably our most consistent four-quarter game across the season. So um, I think our players are really um, starting to embed and understand their roles and understand how each role impacts another role and um, they're able to stay on task and execute for longer. So um, they should be growing confident that when they do that, they get the result. And when we, when we go away from that um, and don't execute roles for each other and um, don't get the contest right, then um, the scoreboard reflects that also. So I think there is a level of belief. Um, we've just got to yeah, maintain the rage. How much credit do you give to Sean Darcy? He's, he said all along he's worked off the field and now it's proving on the field. How do you feel about him at the moment? Well, he's a key pillar of our side. Um, he's given our midfield um, a good look at ground level. And you're right, he's, he's in, his improvements come from the work he's put in off the field. He's um, here at seven o'clock every morning whether it's doing extra fitness work or extra work with um, Joel Corey, our, our midfield coach, um, and Josh Carr. So he's, he's really putting the work. The work. Um, he's reaping the benefit of that and also the benefit of the work he's put into his body to be able to play long minutes week after week. And that's something that's probably held him back in the past. And the prospect of getting tabs back in as soon as next week, how do you feel about that going into college? Well, it's really important for us. He's, um, he's been such a consistent player for us um, as, a fo as a key forward. He takes the opposition best key back and that allows you know, Lobby and Tracy to get, a, um, get the second and third defender. And um, you know, he's a really good target for our, for our small forwards to hit front and square. And yeah, we're looking forward to getting him back um, in good form. And you know, he'll be, yeah, hopefully a vital cog come um, back into the season. What do you make of Tracy's development? I think he's progressing really well. He's going to have his ups and downs. Um, thought you know, he created some really good opportunities for himself um, last week. He, he presents up with the kicker really hard, which draws defenders and gives lobby one-on-ones deeper. Um, yeah, he's, as you'd notice, he's a mature body. Um, he's physical. Um, yeah, and he, and he buys into both sides of the ball. And he's, he's a good defensive player as well as offensive, so yeah, he's developing nicely. When you said you saw players after in the short turnaround, does that mean you, 
couple of doubts of No, no, we think they'll, they'll be right. It's just, you know, bash and crash of an AFL game. Um, five day break does cut it pretty short. Um, so there'll be some guys modified today, but um, we expect them all to come up. Yeah. Is he, is he shoulder any better, any worse? No, I feel, uh, he feels like it's getting better week on week. So, um, yeah, it's a good sign. Uh, the Rory Lobb's kicking routine, obviously much surer than it was last year. What, what's he done? Who's he been working with to, to do that? He's done a lot of work with David Hale, our forward line coach. Um, yeah, and it's about more momentum rather than the length. So, um, yeah, he's tried to get, it, get rid of the stutter. Um, late last year, which he felt was um, throwing him offline and not allowing him to kick through the ball like he wanted to. Yeah, and he's done a power of work over the pre-season and, and um, early in the season to get that stutter out of his game, and it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but yeah, he seems to be on top of it and kicking the ball well. Just it sounds like Joel Hamley's surgery went all right. What are your hopes for him? Well, it's a bit unknown, to be honest. Um, it's Speaking to him last night, he feels really confident that he's got a good result out of the surgery. Um, I'm, I'm really confident he can get back to um, full fitness and, and full form. Um, I, I can't give you a time frame on that though. And uh, Stephen Hill getting closer, you, I don't know, you eager to try getting back into the team? Uh, I'm eager to get him um, progressing. Uh, I, yeah, whether he gets back in the AFL side, I, we'll. we'll We'll wait and see how that plays out. He's a quality player and I still think he can get back to his best. Don't get me wrong, but um, we'll just take it week by week with him. Um, we'll build his minutes up at Peel this week um, and progress him to a full game time in the, in the coming weeks. And if he's in good enough form, we'll put his hand up. You said a few weeks ago about David Mundy, there was a possible one year deal on the table, but does he continue to surprise you with the games that he puts together? He could play 600 this way. <coughs> Oh, yeah, don't get that far ahead of yourself. But, um, yeah, he just does it week in, week out. And, I mean, that shows the professional he is, right? He, um, he recovers meticulously. He plans both physically and mentally for each game meticulously. And that's it. And the, and the, and the, um, the output in, in the games is a byproduct of that. Yeah, so he's, he's going nicely. Do you need to rest him or use him or something? Um, yeah, well, it's crossed our mind. Um, we've tried to manage him in games. Um, he played 60 percent of game time on the weekend, um, so we, we managed to get him through that game without um, you know, burning him out. So we've, we've tried to manage him in games. He starts off a lot of quarters, which limits his game time. Um, then when yeah, he's, he's coming to me, wanting to play every week, so we'll just keep putting him in there. What do you make of Geelong? Really blown sides away a lot this year. Is there any sort of to on top of them. Oh, it's, they're a really strong contested team. They bring good heat around the ball. Um, they've got big bodies um, that, we, that break tackles. So we need to get that, that, that right. Um, and they've got a really strong back six that um, you know, are able to repel opposition um, forward, forward, um, forward opportunities. So uh, we need to use the ball well going forward. Um, Obviously, you know, we've got a couple of really strong targets up forward that um, they go through a lot. So, yeah, they're, just, they're strong all over the field. They play a really strong contested brand. So, um, they, yeah, they, they probably taught us a lesson in the contested side of the game last year in the wet. So um, it's a good opportunity to see how far we've come.